So you finally got your dream house in seven days to die, and now you want to protect it from wandering salesmen. I'm going to show something that I originally showed off back in Alpha 16, but it's been a good long time, and I thought, you know what, this might be fun to kind of revisit. And that is setting up a zombie detection system here. Now, of course, this is pretty simple. It's really not that complicated. I'm sure other people have also done this since the first time I showed it off there, but it's been a minute. So what we can do is we can set up a board kind of like this. I have it right over the front door of the house using just these basic lights. What we can do is we can wire in a bunch of motion sensors in different parts around the house so that if zombies are detected wandering by and you hear them growling, you can just look up here and see which light is lit up and immediately know which part of the house is being invaded by brain dead idiots. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put in the actual motion cameras. So once we do, uh, once I get these wired in, then I can adjust the direction they're actually facing and the angles and everything else. But we just need to get them placed to start with. These are going to be my two in the front door. I'll have it kind of pointing off this direction with the kind of overlap here and this direction. So if they're wandering in from the sides. Now over here in the corners, since this is a much larger POI than what most people are going to be setting up as their actual base, I'm only going to do one on each corner. Um, but technically you could do one on each corner like this so that they're facing away from each other and get full coverage. Put one right here in the middle if you want to. But again, I'm keeping it nice and simple just for the sake of this uh, tutorial, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. I'm going to be doing two cameras in the back over here as well. So I'm going to put it, uh, let's see, let's do it right there. And then we'll put the same one right over on this side there. It doesn't matter if they're the same height or not. It's just kind of wherever you want it here. All right. Basic, simple layout here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cameras. So we're going to have eight lights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Unfortunately, the way the electricity system works in seven days to die, you can't chain together multiple things. So while it would be nice to be able to have everything going into a light and to have a siren go off at the same time. So, hey, by the way, you got sound and lights. Unfortunately, you can't chain all those together to, in one circuit. You would have to basically run multiple circuits there. I'm not going to do that. We're going to keep it with just the light system. So first thing you're also going to need to do is you're going to have to have some power. I'm going to set it up the most redundant way possible. I'm going to set it up so that we've got solar power coming in, set up a couple of these. And then I'm also going to be setting up a battery bank on top of this too. So that way if the batteries start going dead or anything like that happens, then the solar power can actually recharge those. So. You connect your solar power to your battery bank, and as long as the battery bank is not charging anything, then the solar batteries or the solar panels over here will charge the battery bank. So you can leave all of these on. Yes, you could use a generator as well, but that way it's not constantly running. You don't have to hear it all the time. So the basic flow is you want to go from a power source to the end here. It's got to go kind of in a straight line. So what we're going to be using is a bunch of relays. Since we chose the largest POI in this particular area, we got to have to use a bunch of relays. If you're doing a much smaller house, then you don't have to do this, obviously. So we're going to get a bunch of these relays set up and then we'll get them all wired in. Okay, now clearly I'm doing all this with God Mode on so I can fly around just to show you for an example. If you're not using God Mode, it's a little bit more of a challenge to be able to run wire because trying to go like through ceilings and stuff, you can only go about a maximum of about 15 spaces from when you connect this. So if you're trying to get all the way over here and it's not letting you connect this kind of far, what you may have to do is kind of stretch the maximum distance that you can go with it. Now, each one of these relays takes up one watt of power. So what you would end up needing to do is just make sure you have enough battery power here to cover all the juice coming out of this. And each relay can only connect to up to eight devices, I think, which is why I have so many going on over here. So um, I'm going to need to run some more over here for each one of those in the corners, but this is just showing the basic level setup. I'm just kind of going straight from the battery pack through the different relays like that. Now, if you really want to get special, there's some mods out there that allow you to do all the wireless, uh, to do wireless electricity, so you don't have to have all these. And there's some mods out there as well that hide the wire. So right at the moment, so you got cables running everywhere. If you don't mind cable management the way it looks, then you can just do it however you want to. But for the moment, um, you kind of just have to deal with it. As long as you don't have something electrical in your hand, it doesn't at least light up so it doesn't look too bad. Okay, so we got the first camera hooked up over here. We need to get the rest of these wired up now. All right, 
Got all the cameras wired up. You can see it actually doesn't look too bad even with the wires. Uh, it's not too bad. Now, if you're going to be doing a larger POI, like I said, the uh, the number of things that you can connect to a single source is limited here. At the moment, we have eight going to this. And if you look at the actual information on this, you'll see that our maximum power outage that we have with the batteries you have in there is 150 watts. Currently, nothing is actually turned on, so it's not using any kind of power whatsoever because the motion sensors only draw power when they're on. Each one of those draws about five. So just kind of keep in mind that if you're doing a really large POI or you have more than just a, you know, a dozen cameras, you may have to set up battery banks on two sides. So you can have an entire power source of solar panels and have a battery bank over here and then have a battery bank over here and each one controls about half of the house. But as you can see, we got all of these wired on here. I do have the two front facing cameras. One's on the side of the house, one's on the, the front of the house over here. Not a big deal at all. We're not gonna worry about that. So now what we need to do is we need to wire from the cameras to the actual lights themselves. Now, of course, the easiest ones are gonna be this front door here because, well, they're right there on the front. The hardest ones are gonna be the ones that are multiple floors over there. You're gonna have to run wires through the walls. That's why it's much easier to do this via a small POI. So we run that from this light, or from this camera to this light. And then we run one from this camera to this light. And that's how we're going to have to go about doing connection for all of these. Now, we'll get all the cameras angled to the proper dis, uh, direction once we get all these hooked up so that there's actual power going to them. So, uh, let's see. What we're going to need to do is we're going to have to be able to figure out a way to get between the walls here. So, from the outside of the base, we have one camera over here. Now, you could, if you wanted to, you could just go like around the corners this way. You could do all the way around the outside of the house if you want to keep the wires out. Um, on the outside so that it's a little easier to manage. We might just do that because it'd be a little simpler. All right, so we go from the camera. It's got the power going to it. Run this to here. Run this to here. Now, something to keep in mind, too, that you can do with electricity, I've shown this before, is if you're running the cable and you get too far away to where it's showing the wire is red like that, showing you cannot connect it, like, oh, okay, so from here, it's too far to do that. You can actually connect considerably further away than what you can actually reach here. So it'll stretch further than what it looks like. So if you're getting that red cable indicator that it's, it's too far apart, try clicking on it from this far away. As long as you can actually see this right here, you can click on it from a long ways away. So while it technically is supposed to only go like 12 blocks between relays, you can go like 15 or 16. Makes it a little bit easier. So let's get the rest of these wired in, shall we? All right, got everything wired in. You can see I did not do this the pretty way. There's cables going all over everything. But like I said, if you really want to keep it clean, there's mods out there that allow for uh, to hide the wires entirely. And then there's the whole mods for a wireless system. But if you're doing just strict vanilla, this is kind of how to go about doing it. Now, what I was showing you last time, or before the little break there, that the distance between the cameras, I mean, you can go considerable distance here further than it actually shows. I have gone from this camera through the wall upstairs all the way across over to there. Definitely further than it's supposed to connect. You can see how much further that is. But as long as you can see it, you can connect to it way further than the game wants to allow you to. So we have everything wired in now here. It's definitely not pretty, but it definitely works. So the next thing we need to do basically is we need to get all the cameras set the direction we want to. So as long as they have power, what you can do is you can look at it. Now, if you look off to the side, see, it still has power running to it because it's been triggered, which is the way you want it there. So you can click on camera preview and this will allow you to angle it the way you want to go. There's me. Hello. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start this one that direction. So you point it the way you want to, and then you back out of it. And now that one is set up in the right direction. Same thing we want to do for all of these. You want to get them so that it has a nice little coverage. You can see the cone of the other light going off that direction. So if we kind of point them in the same direction like this, then there's a little bit of an overlap between the two of them. Let me back out this way. So you can see if they're coming on dead on like this, then they're going to have themselves a little bit of a blind spot until they get right here. But the cone extends for a good long way. So as long as you're close by, one of these will trigger. And it could trigger both of them at the same time and let you know, hey, they're right in the front door. Same thing with all of these over here. All right, so we got everything wired in the way it needs to. 
what we need to do now is to what you need to do is to make sure you set each one of these cameras so that it shows up as zombies you can have it show up as you so the light will trigger if you walk past it your allies if you're playing with in other people and stuff there you can change it to strangers and allies but make sure you toggle this to show on the zombies for each one of the cameras or it really won't do anything you'll just be sitting there wondering like why are none of my lights working so make sure you turn on the zombie targeting for each one of the cameras too Okay, we got some of you over here. Okay, now we'll very quickly we'll run back in over here and we can see the other lights lit up. So we got that one's over in a corner. We had one over there for just a second. And now we have one back in near the back door. So it just, it works kind of nice actually here because you can kind of see where they're showing up, where they're running around. If, you know, you don't spawn in the zombies yourself, you can see the direction they're going. Still got one kind of straggling out near the front. Now, again, if you want them to show up right at the front door, none of these are pointed right at the door. So when they're right there, they're not pointed straight down. So if you're going to do the wiring yourself, you know, to make sure you can see if they're right next to the door or not, you would want to make sure that it's pointing down towards the door and not out so much. Anyway, but hopefully you at least saw the, the proof of concept of how this works. You can get as many cameras and adjust it however you want to. Use it to set up additional traps if you want to. Um, you could obviously do all this and then put in a switch to turn on and off some turrets or some blade traps or anything else you want to. But that way if you're just kind of doing your thing, you're going through and organize your inventory and you hear some zombies. It's like, wait, where are these idiots coming from? then you can you know look up at your little light system here and see which direction they're coming from give you an idea of which direction you need to move anyway just kind of a fun concept i haven't showed this off in a long time i thought it might be kind of useful to some people if you did find it useful do me a favor and leave a like on it uh, if you've used this sort of thing yourself tell me in the comments how it worked out for you and uh, if you're new here make sure you subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss any future videos in the meantime you guys have a wonderful day and i'll talk to you later